So you might have noticed that HF band conditions have been quite poor lately. So over the last month or so, I've been experimenting um, with multi-element vertical antennas, uh, mostly for parks on the air. Um, and I've, I've tried a few different varieties uh, using a two element. Uh, I've tried both using a reflector and then also using a director. And I even tried a three element the other day. Um, the three element gets a little tricky because there's mutual coupling between the elements and it probably requires something like a gamma match or a hairpin. But a two element is, is quite simple to set up and it seems to give you a very decent performance. Um, not only looking at the number of QSOs I made, but also looking at the reverse beacon network, um, I'm definitely uh, stronger in the direction that the uh, um, antenna is pointed. Um, so yesterday I realized I actually have a fence that's facing northeast. And so I had the idea of, of mounting one of these two element vertical beams on the fence and seeing if it would work here at home. Uh, my antennas at home are, are fairly limited as I live in an HOA. So anything I put up needs to be taken down pretty quickly. Um, I have a cobweb on a telescoping uh, pole that works it works well in decent band conditions. However, uh, there are times where it just does not have enough gain to really get me through either a pileup or work uh, DX. So yesterday I mounted uh, this beam on the fence and so far uh, it's been working quite well. Um, I've made uh, quite a few contacts and I've ran a few uh, reverse beacon tests just to see where my signal's going and those look pretty good. And I even had a, a little bit of DX yesterday. I contacted a, a station in Hungary um, in the middle of the day on 20 meters. So that usually doesn't happen with uh, my other antennas. So let me show you exactly what I have set up. All right, so here you can see along this fence, and this fence is pointed directly northeast, which is perfect here in West Texas because uh, about 38 to 40 degrees is, is towards Europe. And so um, this right here is a 17 foot whip tuned for 20 meters as a quarter wave vertical with two elevated radials, also known as the Poda Performer. And then in front of it, about uh, 10 and a half feet away, which is 0.15 wavelength on 20 meters, I have a, uh, another 17 foot whip that is tuned for 5% higher frequency. So for the CW portion of the band, it would be approximately 14.75 uh, megahertz. Um, on these chameleon whips, it's pretty much uh, almost one full section lowered. Uh, so I have been using an anno VNA to tune it, but I'm almost always uh, fairly within range if you just drop it one segment, maybe just a little less than one whole segment. Um, and then that also has uh, elevated radials. Um, now on the parasitic elements, those radials, um, after you have it tuned, need to be coupled with the parasitic element, meaning they need to be connected to the whip. Um, so I just have a, a simple uh, banana plug uh, plugged into the coax connection and then that's, the radials are connected to that. But you could just use a clip and clip to the bottom of the antenna. Um, these are mounted with mirror mounts and I can go to the other side of the fence and show you how I did that. So here's how I mounted it to the fence. Basically it's just using uh, cheap mirror mounts that you can find on Amazon for around $10 a piece I think. Um, I did put a block of wood just to kind of compensate. I've got these uh, boards running on top of my fence so you may not need that but um, that makes it a lot easier to mount for me. Um, so I've got a mirror mount and I've got a choke and then you can see the radials just clip to the mirror mount. And so that is the radiating element. And then as far as the um, parasitic director, um, you can see, I don't know if you can see it from this angle, another mirror mount just mounted to the fence. And then I've got a, a bullet connector going in the center connector of the coax and it is just clipped, um, the, the radials are just clipped to that. So far, I've gotten very good signal reports using this setup, and I've, I think I've been able to make a lot of contacts I probably would otherwise not be able to make. Um, so this, this setup appears to be a very simple way to boost your signal. Um, 
it's a very easy antenna to set up in the field too. You're basically just using two POTA performers. Um, so if you have two whips, um, you might give this a shot. So this is an example of how I set up this antenna in the field. And what I found the easiest is to use my um, stake pocket mount on my truck as the radiating element. And I just use a tripod with a POTA performer or my PVC mount uh, approximately 10 and a half feet in the direction I want to go. Um, and then just like on my fence, I set this up 5% shorter than the radiating element. Yesterday, I actually took a cheap field strength meter and placed it behind the antenna. And as you can see here, uh, it's reading about two. And then in front of the antenna, it's reading about twice as strong. So this uh, shows that it is working. Here's some of the uh, reverse beacon data. So as you can see here, this is um, my reverse beacon data from the other day when I set this up, um, I went out to the park and did the CW op CWT. And I was able to work a lot more stations in the one and two call area than I normally am able to make. In fact, I made the second highest score I've ever made in the CW op CWT. I was able to get 70 contacts in the hour contest. Um, what was interesting is I have a, a good friend that's an excellent CW operator that lives uh, just a couple blocks away from the Bush house where I was at. And he has a, an excellent antenna. It's a doublet up about 30 feet in the middle. And here's his reverse beacon data from the same exact contest. And as you can see, um, he was not quite as strong uh, towards the northeast as I was. And the antenna was pointed toward the northeast. Here's a QSO map from um, the CWT and uh, a little bit of a POTA activation after the CWT. Um, I was able to make 108 contacts in about two hours. Here's the reverse beacon spots that I had here from home yesterday. Um, as you can see, um, the antenna is pointed about uh, 38 to 40 degrees and you can see I'm very strong up towards Chicago, which is exactly 40 degrees from my current location. Um, and I actually hit a couple reverse beacons in Europe. Last week, I was able to set up a three element. And like I said, this is a bit tricky because the uh, adding that third element really did kind of um, a, you know, alter this, the SWR and the impedance of the antenna. I used a, a tuner um, just to kind of clean it up a little bit, but it did seem to work very well. Um, I was able to make 170 QSOs um, in a little less than four hours. Um, so I, I was very happy with that and even made some DX, a couple uh, German stations, uh, one in France um, and one in Belgium. And here's the uh, reverse beacon spots that I had there with the three element. Um, you can see that, that I'm quite strong up towards the northeast and even hit uh, a reverse beacon in England, which was, was fairly strong. I might make a longer video um, that kind of shows a little bit more about this setup, but if you have any questions, just let me know. 73.